what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overload here so this will be a recap for the june 7th 2024 edition of friday night smackdown kicked off with a video package recapping what happened last week as you see here in this image aj styles had his mark henry moment and did a great job we all knew what the outcome was going to be because he ended up beating the crap out of aj styles letting him know that he had a lot more left in the tank just like mark henry did to john cena all those years ago i love how they always try to recreate this moment and how that's become like this highlight of mark henry's career but after this opening recap package of aj styles pulling the rug out from under cody rhodes we got the bloodline or as i like to call them the bloodline 2.0 kicking off the show uh, because that's what this feels like it feels like cm punk and the new nexus back in 2011 if you remember them solo sokoa tama tonga and tonga loa march their way to the ring with paul Heyman, who has been doing a great job selling this fear he has towards these dudes upon entering the ring Heyman announces that until roman reigns returns solo is the new head of the table or the new tribal chief i think he said and tama tonga is his right hand man tonga loa gets his praises from Heyman as well solo hugs him and when Heyman tries to say thank you and good night to the crowd solo reminds him that he's forgetting something he says Heyman should be thanking these two for saving him from kevin owens last week and he does just that out of fear Heyman warns them that kevin owens is looking for a piece of the bloodline and as soon as he gets done doing that ko's music hits Heyman exits the ring and Owens runs in to initiate the brawl with all three members of the bloodline. The numbers game gets the best of Owens until the Street Profits come to save or come to make the save. Owens ends up getting the chair and the bloodline is ran off from the ring. Backstage, we're shown Cody Rhodes walking around angrily waiting on AJ Styles to arrive so he can get his lick back from last week. Solo shouts at Paul Heyman backstage and threatens him to talk to Nick Aldis so they can have a six man tag match tonight in the main event which ends up being made official bianca belair and jay cargill make their way to the ring for a tag team match against indy hartwell and candace Lerae. candace and indy make their way to the rings afterwards of course during the match Shayna baszler zoe stark and the unholy union make their way to ringside to observe the match belair and cargill make quick work of their opponents and then after the match both teams that were outside the ring run in and attack the tag champions then the two teams score off inside of the ring before Cargill and Bianca come back in to perform synchronized finishing moves on the Unholy Union. Nick Aldis meets Cody backstage and tells him AJ or, or tells him AJ and he should consider this because it's not smart to fight backstage since someone could get hurt. Cody brushes it off and continues to wait for AJ. Johnny Gargano makes his way to the ring for a singles competition with Tommaso Ciampa accompanying him one half of DIY. Sarah Schreiber interviews Apollo Crews, or tries to anyway, because Legato Del Fantasma interrupts with a beatdown. Nick Aldis shows up to assist, breaking this up. L.A. Knight pesters him even further about Logan Paul's whereabouts. Carmelo Hayes appears to taunt L.A. Knight, prompting Aldis to make a 1v1 for later tonight. Grayson Waller makes his way to the ring to face Gargano. Now, there was a pretty scary spot during this match outside of the ring in terms of Gargano nearly snapping his neck. If you know, you know. But yeah, it was pretty obvious that spot wasn't supposed to go that way. Grayson Waller managed to pick up the win. Nick Aldis goes back to Cody Rhodes and or he goes back to Cody Rhodes with security, letting him know that AJ is going to pull up soon. And this is just a precaution to keep things in order. Cody paces back and forth waiting for AJ, who pulls up in his car with Gallows and Anderson at his side. Cody makes his way to the ring and tells AJ to get to the ring right now. AJ comes out to the arena but stays up on the ramp. He tells Cody what he wants is irrelevant to him. AJ tells Cody to give him what he wants though. A WWE Championship match next Saturday at Clash at the Castle in Scotland. Cody accepts but says it's not going to be any ordinary match. It's going to be something in line with what he should have done last week. It's going to be an I Quit match. Jay Cargill and Bianca Belair are interviewed by Byron backstage. A tag team triple threat match against the two teams that attacked them earlier is now made official for next week's PLE. L.A. Knight makes his way to the ring for his match against Carmelo Hayes. L.A. Knight picks up the win and then tells Logan Paul to the camera. If he doesn't want to come to SmackDown, he'll bring SmackDown to Logan Paul. Tiffany Stratton tells Nia Jax backstage that they should team up. The queen and princess of the ring. Mi Chen confronts Nia, throws a drink on her, and then they have a brief brawl before that's broken up. Bailey makes her way to the ring to cut a promo, but Piper Niven and Chelsea Green interrupt her. 
Bailey ignores Chelsea's ramblings and tells Piper Niven how much she respects her and intends to beat her in her home country next Saturday. Piper Niven retaliates with an absolute banger of a promo. I mean, I was hanging on to every word she was saying. That's how great this promo was from Piper Niven. Uh, cannot wait to see those two face off next weekend. And now we are at this. Well, actually, before we got to the main event, we got this brief promo package of Logan Paul at his house, I guess, in L.A. Telling uh, L.A. Knight that he's planning to collect another belt tomorrow night in this Tetris competition or something. Talks about how L.A. Knight knows nothing about earning championships or having belts and to stay in the mid car where he belongs with the whole crowd chanting Logan Paul. Yeah, or something like that. You know, a play on L.A. Knight's thing. Now we're going to jump into the main event. Now, our six-man tag team main event actually ended up resulting in a DQ. As exhilarating as the match was, and it was very fun to watch, it ended up in a DQ with the show concluding with the Bloodline 2.0 driving Kevin Owens through one of the announcer tables and doing the signature pose that they like to do, recognizing that they are those ones. So... Paul Heyman was off to the side, putting his finger up in nothing but fear once again. Paul Heyman, at, to me, at least is the best thing about what's happening right now with these new group of bloodline people. Uh, I'm not just I, I'm just not fully invested in this solo stuff. Solo's doing a great job. It's just something about it that I'm not fully invested in. I think it's because of the fact that they're trying to keep the bloodline active while Roman is gone and I get that this possibly is building up to a SummerSlam match between him and Solo which possibly is going to be good I like it and can appre I can appreciate long-term booking plans from Triple H I'm just not fully on board with what they're doing with Solo and these other two Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa they're doing a great job it's just not the same and it doesn't hold a candle to the original bloodline I thought the Smackdown tonight was pretty decent you know, the opening segment I thought was decent up until the point where you saw like a rehash of what we already saw last week or even a week prior to the Street Profit saving Kevin Owens or some type of variation of it. Also, I can appreciate that they are addressing these pacing issues because this show did not go off the air with the network pulling the plug out from under them or pulling the plug on it. It actually was able to get the full picture told with the bloodline standing over Owens and the show went off a few minutes earlier than anticipated, I think, as well. Nice to know that we have the second match rematch confirmed between AJ Styles and Cody Rhodes. I'm certain that I Quit match will be a banger. I'm certain Cody Rhodes will also come out on top. But that's to be expected because I think the long-term plan right now and the expectation is that it's going to be him versus Randy Orton at some point, if not at SummerSlam, some point in the very near future. Let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe, turn on post notifications, and in this video, in the description, I'll have links on my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there to let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.